Hi, I'm Monica and let's talk about what I read in December. Last month, I read a total of four books and two of them were rereads and they were all fantasy books. And I was quite happy with how much I read because some of these books were quite lengthy, so I'm really happy about the amount that I did read. First up, I read a dark academia book, which was The Atlas Six by Olivia Blake. I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. In this one, we're following a group of six young adults who are all insufferable and they're all competing to join the society, which is to be able to gain access to the archives of the Alexandrian library. And with that, they could have a life of power, wealth, and privilege. However, the catch is for initiation, only five candidates can make it and one is eliminated. I was very pleasantly surprised by this one because I've heard how all the characters are very unlikable and that is so true, but I ended up enjoying myself and finding out why these characters are the way they are and also figuring out why these characters are so willing to go the lengths that they do to join the society. We definitely dive in deep with our characters, goals, pasts, and personalities throughout the six different points of views that we do get. However, the world building was somewhat weak but I really did enjoy my time and the themes of the relentless pursuit of the knowledge as well as seeing how far these characters will go to achieve their desires and I think I'll wait a little bit of time before picking up the sequel because this one I did struggle a little bit with reading it really quickly but I think I will continue on with the series. Next, I read Spells for Forgetting by Adrian Young and I rated this one a 3 out of 5 stars. This book was my first book from this author and I would definitely say it is a perfect fall and atmospheric read. The writing is very lyrical and very slow moving for our character's stories. We're on Cheshire Island after the murder of Emery's best friend by her ex-boyfriend August Salt who was the accused murderer but it was never confirmed that it was ever him. And then August returns back to this small community on this island to bury his mother's ashes after 14 years. The unraveling of how Lily died comes to light and for the townsfolk, it is not what they expected. This one reads more as a murder mystery rather than a fantasy, even though it's labeled as fantasy. There are fantastical elements such as the island being somewhat sentient and knowing things. And there's also witchcraft but it wasn't that prominent but I guess it really ties in into the ending. The murder mystery itself was very very interesting to me and figuring out like the clues and what led up to the events of the night of the fire that happened to kill Lily. The tension throughout the book was very very nicely built up and I really didn't guess the motivations of the murderer and I was surprised by the ending. However, the ending is abrupt because of the decisions by our main characters, Emery and August, that we are following through their perspective and they make these abrupt decisions right when the truth is uncovered. However, the author did really craft a wonderful and lyrical story with murder mystery and some fantastical elements. Although this book wasn't the most exciting for me to read, I will still continue and read this author's backlist. Next, I finished The Way of Kings by Brennan Sanderson and this was a reread and I rated it a 5 out of 5 stars. This was my second time reading it and it did not disappoint. As an adult epic fantasy and over a thousand pages, it really did not feel that long as you might expect it would be. And getting back into the world of Roshar was so, so nice. I miss the characters, Kaladin, Shalon, Aelin, Dalinar, and everyone else that we do meet along the way. I especially loved how deep and real that you get to know of each character's journey and what their motivations are and their backgrounds. With Kaladin, we see his struggle with depression, overcoming the mental hurdles from becoming a slave from a soldier as well as fighting to protect others. Next, with Shalon, she is a very talented artist and she does wish to become a scholar after exploring her newfound freedom after becoming the ward of the king's sister, Yasna. However, a secret will turn her into a thief. And then we have Dalinar who is a high prince and he's also a warlord. However, he is experiencing visions about a long lost history and he struggles with his morals. Overall, the journey of all the characters, the wonderful rich world building that we get, the magical systems, and very consumable writing. I just love this world. I love The Way of Kings and this is easily one of my all time favorite books. And with the Stormlight Archive, I'm very excited to continue on reading this series.
Last but not least, I did my reread of Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo as well. I did end up lowering my rating to a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I previously rated it 5 stars and this was because of how slow the intro was to this book. But once you get past that part, the buildup of the plot really pays off well. And if you are interested in a reading vlog for Ninth House, that will be up very shortly and I'll link that in the description box below. This is a dark academia adult fantasy with very dark occult themes with ghosts, hell, and sacrifice. Our main character, Alex Stern, comes from a very hard past and she is offered a chance to attend Yale University but she needs to watch over their secret societies to protect them from so-called dark forces. And it does help out that she has the ability to see ghosts. Very quick thoughts about Ninth House. The world of Yale University with its secret societies is very, very dark, especially with the occult themes. The magic that we do learn about has very serious consequences when misused. With Alex as our protagonist, she's very strong-willed and determined, and she's willing to go to very far lengths in order to protect her friends. I also really enjoyed Dawes with her quirky nature and the detective Turner being one of the good guys even though he's a skeptic. And I really, of course, enjoyed Darlington with him being quite different from the typical wealthy upperclassman. The ghost did really add a layer of eeriness and atmospheric quality to this world. And I'm just really excited for how bent and I'm assuming that there will be a lot more ghosts and possibly demons in that one. Overall, this reread of Ninth House was needed for me because I found that I did not remember a lot of the important events. But going into January now, I'm very excited to see what happens in the sequel. And with that, those were all the books I read in December. I'm really excited to see what 2023 has in store for me on the reading front. And I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below, and ring the notification bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye.